I got a box and a box. I lovingly dubbed this piece the hubcap. Oh, I love that piece. Oh my gosh. As you guys can see, oh, this piece gosh, is just the sparkles coming off here. Absolutely Crazy. incredible. This is actually natural. These pieces are so sought after. It's really pretty, guys. <laughs> This is like the first time I think we've sat at this table together. We, this is the first time. Yeah. Here today, we are going to talk about the SGR. So if you guys don't know what the SGR is, it is a three volume set that we have produced in house at JTV that is all about minerals and gemstones and their identification. It's got lore, it's got all these interesting stories. It has absolutely fantastic images. It was, the original brainchild of one of our founders, Jerry Sisk, who unfortunately passed away, but this has been a massive labor of love to bring his dream to fruition. I use it every day. It's just an absolute wealth of information. We both did different editorial contributions to the book. The third volume is a catalog of just all these absolutely beautiful images. And we're gonna show you some of the actual pieces themselves. Did you bring anything? I brought something. I did. I did bring things. Let's look at some things that are actually in the book. Okay, so we have a uh, not so standard box. I want you to read the clue. That's not a clue. This is the clue. <laughs> this is a pretty big clue right here. Don't judge a rock by its box. Oh gosh, it could be anything out of the book. That one? No. Not that one. This is an absolutely spectacular amylite from the Bear Paw Formation in Canada. Oh yeah. I lovingly dub this piece the hubcap. This piece is one of my favorites for obvious reasons. It is gigantic as a geologist. It is really cool to see a piece like this actually come out of the ground in, well, one piece. These little ammonites are from Canada. So you can get ammonites that have amylite, which is the gemstone, that extend down into Utah a little bit, but the finest and the best quality and the only commercial source mm -hmm. is from the Bear Paw Formation. So cool. this is actually caused by light interfering with the aragonite structure. Think almost like an oil slick, the way uh, light scatters and gives a rainbow on an oil slick. It's the same thing like going in and out of different layers yeah. of material. What's really crazy about these guys, this particular little critter existed around 75 to 66 million years ago. Just so like this, just a big floating shell. Yeah, well they had a little these guys are found in shale, which is a type of rock, and it's really flaky, it's really fragile, and they're usually coated in either siderite or pyrite. That's, no, that one's coated in now, though. No, this is actually coated in car varnish to keep it from being damaged by UV light mm -hmm. and to keep it from flaking. These shells can be as thin as like 0.2 millimeter. I mean, they're, they're extremely thin and extremely fragile. Some of you may notice that this piece it actually wants to sit like this there's a story there so if you guys notice the image it's Here, sitting let me see up like this so we literally took a piece of fishing line a little clip on the back of it two poles and we situated a little clip just barely holding this up and then a tiny little piece of velcro tiny oh tiny God. piece of velcro the photographer was like don't move we held our breath. And we literally stood on either side of it like this. Like literally like this. So when you see this picture, sliding. just picture both Elizabeth and I on either side of it, out of the frame of the picture, because that's right where we are, ready to pounce on this thing if it shifts a micron. <laughs> I got a gray hair or two from that one, I think. Okay, you can look now. Whoa. <laughs> and now it's time for you to get a clue. This was one of the first pieces I acquired when we hatched the plan for volume three. There's a clue in there. There's an actual clue in there. Hatched. So it is, I believe, the opal egg. Ready? Blah. <laughs> One of the amazing things with doing the photography for the systemology reference is we wanted to make sure to show everything to its best effect. We were able to get the photo in so close that we can show it to you in much greater detail than you can really see with it in hand. Let's get this off of here. Arr. It's so cute. This one is what we call a boulder matrix opal. You have solid opals, which are opal top to bottom. You have boulder opals, and a boulder opal is like a natural double. You have a thin layer of opal on top of a layer of the natural matrix. This is called a boulder matrix opal because the opal is actually 
inner grown into the matrix itself. So it's not just one flat layer over the opal, there's opal throughout the entire stone from one side to the other going all through the middle and out the sides. Sorry. <laughs> Good thing it's not a real egg. <laughs> just, it's incredible. It's got color every every bit of the rainbow. And that's, that's one of the quality factors you always look for in opal is you wanna have a full range of color if possible and you want those colors to be as vivid as possible. It's just, Spectacular. All right, what you got for me next? Okay, we're going back to the traditional boxes, guys. I'm ready. Take out your next clue. I know you're a jolly old chap, so this is your cup of tea. Okay, that's gotta be from England. <laughs> Although my accent is very obviously not. I'm calling my shot, boom. Yeah. Let's see. I love these pieces. Yes. This is just an absolutely beautiful fluorite specimen from Roger Lee, England. This forest green color is extremely famous from there. This mine is actually a 19th century quarry. They were exploring and they actually discovered some of these fluorites and it became for a while, the only mine in England that was exclusively mined for the production of mineral specimens. Absolutely beautiful specimens. They also make some beautiful, beautiful gemstones when oh, cut. Absolutely. Very rarely you find so, them cut, but when you do, One of my beautiful. favorite things about these is their shape. I love that you get these really awesome, they're called penetration twins, in these crystals. And not only that, and let's see if I can get this right. There we go. Ooh, yeah, there so go. they have show, incredibly quick. intense Woo! fluorescence. See if it'll actually show more of the, the natural daylight. There we go. So that would be more what you see if you take it outside. So you get this pretty blushing blue color. And what's really cool, this piece came from the Bluebell Pocket. The reason it was called the Bluebell Pocket is this intense blue fluorescence. And you can stand uh, with this piece like right in an open doorway and it's just vivid green like that and then boom, you walk outside and that's what you get like immediately. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. Okay. Also the plastic? This is one of my horrible, horrible plays on words. Also the plastic. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I had seven. It's really, really years. bad pun. A lucite and a. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> also the plastic and the lucite. So it is this picture. I got a box in a box. We have an even littler box. Oh, is it soda light? Oh, it's a soda light. There you go. I knew I recognized oh, it. Oh, we got right there. Figure out how this works. The hinge is on one side. Yeah, I just don't, I don't want to hurt it. It looks old and valuable. Whoop. So if you guys can't see, it is tenancy. Again, we've got a very, very small thumbnail sized piece. Thumbnail's basically under three centimeters. Here you go guys, there's the visual. Yes. Thumbnail. Thumbnail. What's special about it, or what, what is renowned for, is that it's trichroic. And what that means is you can see the stone as three different colors depending on the direction in which you view it. Now when light goes into a stone, if it's transparent, it'll bounce around and it'll come back out in another direction. So I gave it to uh, Jim Wells, a uh, photographer, and that was the super challenge that he had with photographing this, was to be able to show the yellow, the orange, and the green all in uh, one direction when photographing it. And he, he had so many lights on this thing just to make sure that he got the light of the correct color bouncing out the front of it to show. It was just amazing. But this one, this one was, uh, this one was uh, super challenging just to even get a representation of. And I did uh, at long last find a crystal, um, <laughs> find yourself. I totally did. <laughs> I was gonna see if I couldn't show it directionally, oh, so I can't strong. tell if yeah. you guys can see the orange oh, I can, yeah, and the green. I, I mean, here. I can see it right now. Yeah. A lot of people think it's actually a color change or a color shift stone. Now, it's a completely different property. It doesn't change because of the quality of the light. It just changes color depending on the viewing direction. Do you have another clue for me? I do. Am I going to have to speak in a silly voice to read it? No. Okay. There's no need for extra glitter. Oh, boom, that just jumped out at me. Oh, I'm yeah. calling this one. Oh yeah. Oh, I love that piece, oh my gosh. It looks like glitter. Okay. But it's, but it's so, not glitter. 
So this is calcopyrite on dog toothed calcite. But so as you guys can see, this piece oh is just coming off here. absolutely incredible. So no need to add extra glitter. But the funny story with this piece, so this is a piece that came out of China. This is actually very natural, but unfortunately a lot of times what happens is people sometimes think things need a little extra something for people to buy them. So somebody had the brilliant idea to actually take glue and glitter and put it on this. And so the company that we ended up buying it from had to sit there with a microscope and pick it off of it. The reason that these pieces are so sought after and so just absolutely beloved in the mineral community is because of this beautiful iridescence that you get on these Jeruzy calcopyrites. So the Rainbow colors are actually caused by a reaction with acids in the fluids. Oh, okay. So it's not like an oxidation process. Mm -mm. So it's it's actually a um, tarnish, but it so makes this beautiful effect. It's the mineral has combined with something in the acid to create a, a little layer that's causing okay. the iridescence. Yeah, and you guys can actually see. Oh yeah. Where it was cut out of the rock that it came from yeah. in the mine. I have one last piece for you. Okay with arms open wide. Actually, with, with arms wide open. Oh my gosh, that song's gonna be stuck in my head all day. <laughs> okay, I think I know which one this is. <laughs> so this little guy. That is correct. This is our little guy right there. One of the most iconic gemstones is sapphire. Gem crystals are hard to come by because they are so valuable. And of course, really fine gemstone crystals often get cut even if they would make nice specimens. This is one of the first mineral specimens that I ever bought. I had no clue as to what I was looking at at the time. I just knew I really liked it and I thought it was super, super cool, which is always the best reason to get a specimen or a gem or a piece of jewelry for your collection is because you like it and you're going to enjoy it. This particular piece is a sapphire crystal and it has two twin crystals coming off of it. It just looks like it's it's just ready for a hug. A very, very small, small specimen here, but we're able to use the book to show it to you in immaculate detail. All right, so you've got yours, I've got mine. What is the one that you want to take a closer look at on the table? I like this one. Oh, okay. I just, I love that the more you turn it, the prettier it gets and just all that beautiful play of color. It looks like somebody put glitter in a rock. It's just so pretty. And for me, it would definitely be this one because, you know, like I said, I love fluorite. It's one of my favorites. If you get it under an intense black light, you're gonna get like crazy fluorescence there. But yeah, this is just really that daylight inside, outside, inside, outside. Oh, I just love it. All right, folks, thanks for being with us today, and I hope you enjoyed all the specimens that we brought. We've had a lot of fun. We hope you guys had fun. Today, we've featured specimens from the third book of the Sister Homology Reference, but there's great information and even more great photographs all through volumes one, two, and three. So uh, if you don't have a copy, get one today. Find the link below. Like and subscribe, ring that bell, let us know that you're here. Use the book emoji in the comments and if there is a particular mineral specimen or just a mineral or gemstone in general that you want to know more about, leave a comment and we'll see if we can't feature it sometime. Thank you guys. Look forward to seeing you again soon.